Now, what I would also encourage you to do, too, is, is uh, over those next few weeks, coming into the Christmas season, one of the things we notice people do around Christmas is that they're more open to church and to church stuff, right? Because it's Christmas. And that's what we're celebrating. So, one of the things I would encourage you to do, too, is, is invite a friend to come to church with you. Invite someone to, to come along, and Joe's done a good job. <laughs> And brought her, brought a friend this morning, and uh, I'm glad that you're here this morning with us. I don't, and hopefully I'll get to meet you later on. But uh, just so you know, I, I just encourage you to do that. You know, it, the way we grow is not by what the pastor does. It's not by what the pastor staff, pastoral staff does, or the leadership does. It's based on what all of us do to make to help our churches move forward and grow. So just to give that some thought. Uh, we're entered into our third part of our study um, on who is Jesus, which is very, I mean, appropriate. We're not going to necessarily go directly eventually. We're not going to hit on, on a, a Christmas story per se, but basically, it's what Christmas is all about. Often, as we do Christmas stuff and we do uh, um, uh, at this time of year, we focus so much on the fact that the child, the child of the, the king. But that child came with a very much with a great purpose, and that is to let the world know who he is and what he came to do, and what and he had a purpose in coming. So we're going to look at a passage in John chapter ten, verses seven through ten. And this passage is a, it talks about I am the door. Now let's read it together, and then we'll, we'll look at uh, look at the passage. But it says there. So Jesus said again. I assure you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief only come, comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it in abundance. This is a great passage. Although... I'd have to be honest with you, when I was sitting down, last, last two well, uh, ones we looked at, the first one was the bread of life, right? It's easy to talk about bread. It's easy to come up with illustrations about bread and how good bread is and, and how nice when you put that nice bread, that butter across that, that, that nice warm bread, how amazing it is. Now, I'm doing that for a purpose just to remind you, but also maybe make you hungry too, right? Because then you'll stay for coffee and maybe after and enjoy some fellowship and prayer time together. But um, also, though, we talked about Jesus being the light. He said, I am the light, last week. And that's pretty easy to talk about. I was able to talk about going caving and, and that. And then I sat down and I looked and I went, I am the door. How do you come up with an illustration about a door? And how often have you ever heard anyone say, I am the door? <laughs> you know what uh, we uh, say is, our children, tell our children they're, they're a bright light for a baby. You know, I can even say you're you're as good as bread. You know that nice warm bread. You know that kind of thing. But how often we we tell tell someone, hey, I'm a door. And try to sound cool. Doesn't work. A door was uh, is is a hard thing to come up with an opening uh, to begin with. But uh, so what do you say? What to to make this sound interesting? Well, let me let me give it a try. In our country. Doors are very important, aren't they? Especially at this time of year. What do doors do? They keep out the cold. They keep out the criminals. They keep out those who would just uh, want to make your life visible, like in-laws. They keep out uh, all those kinds of things. As you missed that, they are done. Sorry, you weren't paying attention, were you? I said, what doors do you go? In-laws. <laughs> Um, likes uh, she goes in her room and she'll listen to her music and I'm so 
glad we have our doors so we all don't have to listen to her music at the top of the volume as you just listen to it. But she loves listening to music, and I, and I, you know, I appreciate that, and I appreciate that she closes the door so that we don't have to listen to it. Or she comes and she closes my door so that she can have the, 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 the living room uh, stereo on, and I can watch, sit in my room or, or be downstairs and watch the hockey game and not have to listen to her music. Doors are great things, right? Doors help us in lots of ways. No doors on your, on your room, can you imagine? No doors on the bathroom. Not a great thing, eh? And so on. Remember on the way back from rain this summer, um, the family that we stayed with in High Level there, I think it's High Level, right? High Prairie, yeah. in High Level, they had only sheets on the doors. And when you go into the washroom, and all you have is a sheet, it's not very comfortable. You don't really relax. Just hope that if someone knocks on the outside door jam or realizes, yeah, I'm in there, there's the lights on, or something along those lines. You just don't, you don't sit comfortably, do you? When you're, you're supposed to be resting in the bathroom where there's no door, and just a sheet. Doors are great things, right? So when Jesus says, says to us, I am the door, it's not a stretch for us to get an understanding of what he's trying to say to us. He, it's important. So when we look at verse 7 and 8 of this passage, I, I kind of got the idea that it's a solid door. Because if you look at the, the first couple of verses there, so I assure you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come, or who came before me, are thieves and robbers, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the door, and if anyone enters by me, hold on, drop the, I'll come back to that verse in a second. First two verses there, though, there are all kinds of doors, isn't there? There's glass doors, there's paper thin doors, there's wood doors, metal doors, Screen doors, sliding doors, solid core doors, fireproof doors. If you work in any kind of construction or and have done any kind of work around a house, you know there's all types of doors. Doors that are you think are solid, but inside they actually are just paper. Or there's but there's doors that uh, that keep uh, the clothes here in the sanctuary that are solid wood doors. They're important because they they manage to keep the fire from advancing. <coughs> so doors. Oh, God, there are all kinds of doors in this world. And, and each door holds purpose. Now, if all we had in our front door, the front of our home, was the glass screen door, and you know that has the sliding glass, the screen to keep out the bugs, if that was the only door we had, our house would be hard to keep warm during the summer, or winter rather, and cool during the summer. Because um, when our house, our house faces east and west, so we, we, if we close the door and close everything on, that, on the west side of the house, about the, the heat of the afternoon and so forth. Doors are, they're all doors hold all kinds of purpose. Now, a glass door is great, although you can see through it. You can't, it doesn't really keep you, uh, keep that modesty side of things and so forth. And you know, as you think about it though, when I thought about this and I think about who Jesus is as a door, he talks about how there was those who came before him who were thieves and robbers and the sheep didn't listen to them. Now there's those who come and there's those who try to come to us and they try to, to steal from us still and steal what from us? Our lives. They try to convince us that they have a better way or a more interesting way or they have a religion that is better or they have this and that that makes those going to make our lives better. But really, the, the, the long run, these are things often that will take away from our, our life, our abundance. Because Jesus said, I am the door that gives protection. I am that solid door that keeps um, that that keeps everything, everyone inside safe. Because you have to assume that when he says that there was those who came that are thieves and robbers, he's saying that I am the opposite. If you listen to me, if you come to me, so all these kinds of doors we know of are not you know they're not created equal, obviously. And there's nothing that compares to that one door, Jesus Christ. A door that opens to amazing things and better things now for our lives. That verse, let's look at verse 9. He is the right door, as this verse tells us. It says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. So, isn't that interesting? He's not saying that I'm, you're going to come in, I'm, I'm the door, and when you come in, I'm going to slam behind you, and I'm going to keep you tight inside, and you can't have nowhere to go. He's saying, 
I'm the door that I'm going to let you come in. I'm going to give you light. I'm going to make your life more complete. But I'm also going to open the door to better things in your, in your, in your life. We can, um, in the past, uh, Arnell and I had this discussion about God opening and closing doors. Now, we have to understand that, that there are other things that can open doors to us that aren't always good. But God can open, up, through Jesus Christ, doors to us that are, are amazing possibilities, amazing adventures, amazing new um, things to encounter. He can open up uh, opportunities for you to go on missions. He can open opportunities for you to be a teacher of children in your Sunday school. He can open opportunities for you to lead in worship. I and I don't see Winnie at the moment. I don't know probably mom, maybe mom get ready for a Sunday school or whatever, but but um, I never knew she played a drum kit before. And then she sits and so she does the drum kit, and then she sits and turns around and she does a piano. And then all these things. God opens these doors for us to allow us to be able to use the things that we have learned and have the ability to do. Maybe God has opened up the opportunity for you to be the next preacher, or the next speaker, or the next uh, great missionary, or the next great athlete who, who goes out and does amazing things, but gives that turns around and gives that praise back to God and is able to lead men and women to Christ because of your, your capabilities. God has all kinds of opportunities that He can open to you. All kinds of doors. When He opened Jesus, when we enter through the door of Jesus Christ, we receive that new life. We have that, the doors that open up to us now that are, are amazing possibilities. That are such good things. If we had to, yes, uh, you know, remember the, 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 the TV show, uh, probably the ago, Let's Make a Deal. Remember, yeah, Chester remembers Let's Make a Deal. Remember they came up and they would, they, they'd all be dressed up in these ridiculous costumes, and they would bring me down, and they, they uh, the guy, I can't even think of the, the host's name, like a picture of him, but uh, he was actually from Montreal, uh, originally, and he would have me come up, and he would give me these three doors to choose from, or two doors to choose from. Behind one door, it sucked. It was maybe, I don't know, a cow, or, or some ridiculous thing like that, or behind the other door was brand new car, and you had to choose. See, in our lives today, we have to make a choice what door we're going to go through. We have to decide whether or not we're going to go through the door the world has to offer, and behind that door, you're not going to know what you're going to get. Maybe it is a cow, or maybe it's something worse. Maybe it's a snake, whose name is Satan, waiting to lure you away. Bible tells us that Satan is like a roaring lion that is, that is looking and, and pacing and going around to see who he might devour. So you can either have that choice or you can have the other door choice. That door is Jesus Christ and we don't have to get to find that door. We know that as we open that door, we receive life. It's the right choice. Now I was going to, I thought about doing something this morning. I thought about maybe trying to get some, some little panels to see if you had to open up and, and, and uh, I was going to grab a couple of you and let you make a choice and see how, how, how hard that is. And maybe one I thought about putting maybe like worms or, or cockroaches or something that you had to eat or you know something like I could find or, and then, or, or something like a chocolate covered ants or maybe another one. And the other one would be something that was worthwhile. I wasn't sure. Wouldn't that have been great? No. Who would have been like? Who would have liked to have chosen the chocolate covered ants? You guys ever seen chocolate covered ants? When we were kids, we used to have chocolate covered ants. I didn't eat them. This is just nasty. Things that crawl on the ground are not supposed to be like that. I just this is just wrong. Or people that would eat, you know, when they're out in the wilderness and eat bugs and stuff. That's that's just wrong, right? When I have a better choice, back at home. Where the safety is, where people care, where my parents love me, and they want to give me the best. That's what God's like. See, we can go out into that world and we can eat the bugs and the crud that the world has to offer us, or we can come to God and receive the life and receive that bread and that light and that 
door that of security that he's offering to us. You see the difference? You see the possibilities? You, you have a choice. You have a, a, a possibility there that you can go to that is a, the, the right door. So he's a solid door and he's a right door. And I would say also he's a safe door. Verse 10 it says there, A thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it abundant, in abundance. So he's a door that keeps the thief out from getting to you. He's the door that keeps those that, you know, this week, if you remember on the news in uh, one of the small towns near the city here, I don't recall what town it was in, but there was a woman that woke up this week and had seen in her door a man standing with a hammer and a, a box knife. And basically, uh, the story was not great, right? She struggles with him, gets stabbed. And uh, just luckily, she doesn't get killed. But you see, if we enter the doors of this world, we don't have that protection. If we go through what the world has to offer and, what, and trust and rely on them, we don't have that security. In Jesus Christ, we have the security and the, and the safety that comes only through Him that is where we can guarantee, have guaranteed life, and not only just life, just average life, we have it in abundance. Jesus wants to protect you from the wrong elements that are out there. Jesus wants to protect you from those cold, dangerous elements that are out there. He wants to protect you and keep you in from the, keep the cold out and keep you warm and safe inside. But if you choose Jesus, the door is certain to be the door that will not disappear. How often have you chosen to enter the wrong door in, in, your, in your life? I know why I've done it a few times. We, we pray, we ask for doors to be open or closed, but it's possible that Satan might open a door that is not the right way for, for you to go. In this passage, it indicates that he has used uh, those to do to just that, enter, have you enter through the wrong door. Satan has opened up doors that that, that, that where you'll find the thief and the robber and the one who wants to do damage to you. But I want you to know that Jesus has another door for you to go through. He's waiting for you to come in, to come to Him. He's willing to open the door for you. But it's, it's not just any door. It's Him. And He will not lead you astray or, let, or, or in a way of destruction or any way that is void or empty. It's not going to be a way that, that, uh, that he opens up to you that is going to be full of disappointment. He tells us, I'm going to open it up so that my sheep can go, come and go and go into great pastures. Now as a sheep, if you are a sheep, you want to go to good pasture. You don't want to go into that dry, dusty old old uh, pasture that has no, no green uh, grass to eat or anything. Now can you imagine if we thought of ourselves as sheep, how do we take that and interpret it for our time? Well, I would say that Jesus wants to open a door for you that is that is a life that is full of joy and not disappointment, a life that is full of, of hope and not discouragement, a life that is full of chance or opportunity, not one that is full of, of things that are going to lead to nowhere. You know, you can become the richest person in this world. You can go and shop and coach and get the nice coach bags or purses, or you can go to and shop at some place like that. And you can do all those things. But at the end of the time, of, of your time here on earth, what advantage was it that you had a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or all these things? What advantage was it? Now, it might have been pretty fun for a while. But a life that is void and, and, and goes through that door that only the world has to offer is an empty word. It is an empty word. The one that Jesus offers is that life that is full of abundance, a life that has all, all kinds of possibilities, all kinds of, of uh, amazing things for you to look forward to. So what do you choose? Where do you go? Uh, I thought about this when I was looking at this. It's sort of like in my mind, it's, uh, he, he has a, a true way clear way, a full meal deal in a sense. The right, the right, uh, that, uh, that, that idea of a full meal deal, who likes a full meal deal? Who likes going to a place that you get to go and eat all you want? Hey, that's awesome, that's an awesome deal. Who wants to go to a place that 
oh, you know, you pay a hundred dollars for a plate, and you sit, they sit it down in front of you, and all you have is this little piece of meat. Caviar. And over here is a vegetable, and over here is a small little potato. I've gone to those places and we've eaten like that. But then we went to the commander's palace in New Orleans with our, with our pastor. Our pastor and his wife took Cardell and I down to New Orleans when we were in Oklahoma. Went to the commander's palace. I mean, that's an awesome name already. But we got it and I said, well, I'll have a steak. I don't mind having a steak. And I came out with a steak. This is the biggest plate. And the plate was this big. That's a full meal deal. That's an awesome deal. What, Jesus, what, what Satan has to offer is nothing, nothing like that. What Jesus has to offer is that deal, that full meal steak deal. That, that steak that you can't finish because it's so abundant. <laughs> what Satan has to offer is, is what I often when my friends would say down in the States. Is he offers us a, a, a taco short of a full meal deal. Right? That's what I usually what I tell my, my daughters is that they're talking short of a full meal deal. I'm referring to something else. But they're not that bad. But you know, the reality is Satan can't offer you that. Actually, what Satan has to offer is, is that, that, that little tiny waste of time. What Jesus offers is abundance. More than we can ever dream of. When I sat that, when that, that waiter sat that plate down in front of me, it was like, it was like I was in heaven. I was, I was, how old was I then? Oh, well, 20 years younger, I guess. And I could eat the whole thing. And I, it wouldn't go here. It would just, it would just be enjoyable. It was incredible. And then we went to another place in Oklahoma. It's called, uh, um, You Are Cooked. That's another best place in the world to go to. If you ever get a chance to go down to Oklahoma City, go to You Are Cooked. Because you go there, you cook your own dinner. But you, uh, the great thing about it is you go, you go to the fridge, and you pick your steak. And it's this full fridge of all kinds of steak, any kind of steak you want, the biggest, nice big cuts. And then you, you, you take it to the, to the grill, and you throw it on the grill. And as you grill, you have all you can eat uh, um, salad, and all you can eat uh, garlic toast. Man, that's, like, that's abundance. When I think of Jesus in my life, and the door that he opens to me, the pastures that he opens to me, that's what I think of. Now, food obviously is important to me, right? Maybe it's something different for you. Maybe it's uh, it's the, the, that abundance is something else. Maybe it's the the uh, country line dancing. I don't know. I, I don't know what that abundance for you would be, but, uh, but whatever that abundance is, take that and times it by ten, and that's what Jesus is offering to us. That door that He opens to us is, is that's the abundance that He says, "I'm going to give you life, but not just any life. I'm going to give you an abundance." Jesus is that full meal deal and the service and the war that at the end that can only he can find, that, that we can only find in him. Now that same meal, like Commander's Palace, I even forgot about this until this moment this morning, but as uh, we were sitting there, Ardell and, and uh, our pastor's wife ordered creme brulee, and it was uh, this amazing creme brulee, it's like, not creme brulee, what was it called again, Ardell? Huh? Bread pudding, oh that's right, bread pudding, because you got to get the story here, this is this bread pudding gets sit down in front of the two of them, and they're looking at it, and it's this amazing bread pudding. It's big, it's not, you know, not, not this one of these winky uh, kind of bread pudding. It's a little tiny bowl or whatever. It's like a big bowl, kind of like my steak there. And they, and they, as they're sitting there, all of a sudden, the waiter comes up behind him and starts stabbing it. And our adult, and, and our pastor's wife, you can, just, you can just see him, and he's like, What's this guy doing to our bread pudding? And they pour this nice, warm hmm? custard all over it. And our adult was like, Oh, this is the best news of ever. You know, when we come to life in Jesus Christ, we have this great dessert, we have this great meal of life, we have this great opportunities around us, and we have these great, this great uh, uh, possibilities. But then, the best part of it is not just what we experience here, it's what we experience in the end when we go and to be with our Father in heaven. That's the dessert. That's just the, the, that's the, that's just the completion of the meal. That's the full meal deal. I am the door. And if you enter by me, I'm going to give you life. Not only just life, I'm going to give you abundance. Isn't that what you'd like to have? Isn't that what you want in your life? You know, this morning, we, as, we, as we close at our, our message time this morning, I want to give you that, that thought. Maybe you need to come, and you, don't, you know, you don't have to talk to me 
eat at, uh, at, at any time. You can come and there's Chester, Agnes, and Bell, others who are around. That if you want to know more about this life, if you want to pray and receive Jesus Christ in your life, I encourage you to come and approach us today or sometime in the near future. We want to help you to understand that abundance, that door. We want to introduce you to that door we want to, that, that Jesus wants to open for your life. We want to give you that opportunity to come to Him and enter into enter through Him into that life and that life that is abundance. You know, we this year at Christmas we usually we have um, baptisms, and on December twentieth you get you can see people be baptized. Mm -hmm. And if that's something that you'd want to do, we'd encourage you to think about that as well as you enter into that abundant life that God has for you. That's what I. That's what I. Uh, that's the best gift that anybody can give us this day, this Christmas. Is that door to 